hi everyone welcome or welcome back to another video welcome back to another tutorial so in this video i'm gonna show you guys how to make a simple crochet shirt um if you've been following me for a long time you know they are not really my thing i don't know for some reason i've never made i think i made one that was like four years ago ever since then i've never made any any this is so 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 crazy but in this video we are going to make my first ever shirt after four years but i am hoping to actually make more because i think they are actually way more formed compared to a skirt because for a skirt you're just working your way down and that's it so and it's not that bad so i might probably make more uh fingers crossed i might probably make more but it's super super simple to work around you guys know my tutorials are just straightforward so i'm gonna grab the materials so we can go through them before i show you guys what the shots actually look like obviously you've seen from the thumbnail but i'm going to give you guys a view because i actually have it on now so for the materials we have a medium weight yarn i did use this gorgeous yellow color um the one of these is actually a 100 gram and the recommended hook size is actually a size five and six um but i did use something different like i always do but i used 300 gram of this so in total i used three, three balls of this one and you're going to need a measurement tape of course because you're going to need few measurements and for the crochet size i did use a two millimeter and a 3.5 for the shots hopefully you guys can see I used a 3.5 and then a 2 millimeter, which in the video you're going to see um, the reason why I use these two. Um, it's super super simple. You're going to need your waist measurement, you're going to need your hips measurement, you're going to need your desire shot length measurement. Um, that's honestly it. And also you're going to need your measurement from your waist to your wherever you want the shots to actually start. Mine is eye waisted because that's just what I wanted to go for. But it's obviously optional if you don't want to go for eye waisted, you can go for low waist shots. Super super simple. But you're going to need the measurement from where you want your your band to actually land on your body up until underneath your legs, around your hips area. That's basically where you connect the two connections together to get everything to start working on the legs. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. But yeah, that's honestly what you're going to need. Let's go into the video. I'm going to show you guys what the shots looks like before we start the simple tutorial. So this is what the shots looks like. Super, super fun. Let me give you guys a 360 from every angle. You can see that mine has a little gap around the waist because that is what I am going for. And also around this area, you can see that it's super free and there's also a gap around this. But in the video, I'm going to show you guys how you can adjust that because I know not everybody likes stuff like this. So you can adjust the waist to fit you because when it fits you, it also looks, it looks super, super good as well. This is what it looks when it's fitted. But again, like I mentioned, I don't mind this gap and I can always go back and add an elastic or a drawstring if I decide to but I'm gonna show you guys the instructions as well and also you don't have to have this this you don't need all this gap if you don't want this gap and the instructions I'm gonna show you guys how you can adjust that as well but it's super super simple and this is such a fun project and this is such a comfy comfy piece that you can wear and just play around you don't have to think but oh it's too tight or nothing like that this is exactly what I was going for but yeah let's get right into the video and I'm gonna show you how you can get this done for yourself bye bye get started with the waistband you're going to make a slip knot and chain a total of 21 this is the length of the band so if you want yours to be shorter then you can go ahead and do less chains so i'm just going to make a slip knot and chain a total of 21 chains so after chaining a total of 21 you're going to go into the second chain with one of the crochet stitch um, this automatically means you're going to end up with 20 after the crochet stitch because the extra one we chained is a tiny chain and not an actual stitch. So I'm just going to repeat one after the crochet until I get to the very end of the row. So this is after the first row and this is what your work should look like. From here on you're going to chain one and turn and now we are going to start um the second row which is going to be after the crochet but this time around in the back loops and this is basically what is going to give you the band ripped band effect for each for the band honestly so you're going to yarn over the chain one again at the very beginning is just a starting chain 
and you're going to go into that very first after the crochet from previous row and you're going to go into the back loop with after the crochet and you're just going to repeat one after the crochet until you get to the very end of the row and when I get to the row I'm going to chain one and repeat this step until my band is wide enough to go around my waist so basically my waist measurement when the band is wide hey guys so right here i finished my waist measurement mine is 29 inches because that's my waist currently so you want to make sure that this band is your exact measurement when it's on when it's actually in the on stretch form so when you stretch this it's wide enough to go above your eaves so now we are going to combine both ends of the band together we're going to attach it with a single crochet so i'm just going to go into that very first single double crochet after double crochet sorry and i'm just going to single crochet these two ends together until i get to the very end so i'm going to grab a stitch on this end grab a stitch on the opposite side and just single crochet the two together Right here, I already have this two end single crochet together. I'm just going to turn the band, making sure that the seam is going to be inwards because now we are going to start working the pants. So now you're going to go ahead and do a single crochet row around the circumference of the band. So from now on, I'm going to switch to the 3.5, which is what we're going to use for the rest of the pattern. I'm just going to chain one and I'm going to go into every available space with one single crochet. Again, this single crochet row is going to be a starting row and you just need a base row before you start working on the pattern. Also, you cannot really tell how many you need to do. I just always suggest that you do enough. Make sure it's not too much but at the same time make sure you also don't have a lot of gap in between the stitches just so you have a perfect knit first base stitch but you can see that i'm not doing too much but at the same time i'm also not doing too little there is no gap in between the stitches and i'm just doing one into every available space so i'm going to repeat that and i'll see you guys at the very beginning so right here i just finished my single crochet row we are going to start with row one and right into this very first single crochet we are going to go with a double crochet After your first double crochet, you're going to go into the next available space with a double crochet and right into that same stitch, you're going to go with another double crochet. So that's going to be an increase. From there, you're going to go into this next stitch with a double crochet and into the very next, you're going to go into there with two double crochets. So you're going to alternate between one double crochet and two double crochet into the next stitch until you get to the end of this row so this is going to be an increase hey guys so we are at the second row so i just finished the second row which is the increase row now we are going to just go ahead and do a double crochet row and this is just going to be the same from the like from the previous row the only difference is you are going to just do one in every available stitch and usually i'll just go above the previous row because i don't want to chain three i don't want to have to slip stitch into chain three to end of my row i just don't like the way that turned out all the time so i just go into the next find the first stitch right there and go right into this first stitch with a double crochet and of course it's going to look a bit awkward for the next few rows but after your few rows complete you go you're going to see that you don't have to even you don't even see how um, this actually looks now so I'm just gonna go right above with my double crochet row and for this row I'm just going to repeat one double crochet into each double crochet guys that's really what the deal is about this and I'm going to do this for a few more rows I don't know how many rows I'm gonna do yet but when I have the rows complete I will come back and show you guys what the rows are like but i'm just gonna go right round and when i get to this point again i'm going to go above again with my double crochet row until i have few rows and then i'll be back in a bit so i am back with an update i did a total of 27 rows and that should be about 16 inches including the band and 
16, 15 and a half inches almost 16 inches i think the length is perfect this is basically from the band up until the part in between your legs i don't know how that part is called but we are going to now divide these two so we can start working on the two separate legs for the jumpsuit for the pants honestly and i did work my way up until the seam area because the seam area is the center of the back it's right at the center of the back so depending on where your seam area is i always suggest you do that right at the center so it's going to lap just at the back i did work my last row up until that end because that is where we are going to honestly divide so what i'm going to do now just to make sure i have the exact stitch i'm going to make sure i align the seam area where it's supposed to be it has to be at the back and then i'm going to fold these two sides together making sure because obviously we did increase at the beginning so you have to make sure everything is flat like this and i'm going to grab a stitch marker now that i identified that this is my centerpiece instead of marking this part because i already know that piece and i'm not going to go back to the opposite end i'm going to mark the opposite side of the panel so right now you can see that this side which is supposed to be the front panel just aligns with the back so i'm just going to mark that center stitch so i know where i need to attach the i don't know what that thing is called guys i don't make pants so i kind of don't know my terms when it comes to making pants so right there you can see that we already marked the two center which is where we are going to attach everything together so from here on i'm going to again with my with my stitch at the back loop i'm going to go ahead and make a chain and this chain is just going to be a basic chain to attach these two together i'm not going to make a super long chain because i feel like i already have this super high waisted so i'm just going to make a total of five chains after my five fifth chain i'm going to go into this space with a stitch marker with a slip stitch uh honestly with a double crochet and right there you can see that we already divided these two so now this is the next step which is super super basic now we are going to just walk around the side of the of the the pattern so because i want to keep the same pattern i've been working in rounds if i go to this opposite end you kind of will have like a stitch change not like a stitch change but it's going to look way different it's going to look like this side of the pattern while the outside is going to look like that and i don't like the look of that so to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn to the opposite end and we are going to work this way instead of going this way so right from there i'm going to go into this first stitch right from there i'm going to chain one and i'm going to go into this first chain remember i chained five i'm going to go into the first chain with a double crochet and I'm going to go into the next four chains with one double crochet each. So I shall have five double crochets in total. Right after my fifth double crochet i have a double crochet stitch right here let me zoom in so you guys can see properly so right after we have a double crochet stitch right there so right after we are going to go into this double crochet stitch but we are not going into the loop we're going into the stitch itself and this is what is going to align this new roll that we are about to do perfectly instead of just going into the stitch or going into the stitch there is going to be a long gap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into this to seam of the stitch guys i don't know how i can explain this but that is going to just leave a less bigger gap right there and from there i'm going to go into this next with a double crochet and it does look awkward obviously but you're just going to do that and now for me i'm going to repeat one double crochet up around and when i get to this one i'm going to go right above with my double crochet row
so coming to the very beginning i am going to go into this stitch right here with a double crochet and again just the same way we did i'm going to go we have a chain one at the very beginning but i'm going to skip that chain one and go into the very first double crochet again with a double crochet and again this is going to look a bit awkward for the first few rows but after few rows it's going to automatically disappear so you're just going to repeat a double crochet row right above the previous double crochet row all around and you're going to do this until you have your desire length well not desire length i think i'm going to do this for a total of five more inches because then it's going to be about 20 inches and that's my um desire length so depending on how long you want yours to be you're just going to let me put this down so it currently looks like this so i'm going to just take a measurement and see what the, the size should be the length should still be the same so 15 and a half now i'm just going to repeat these rows around for a total of until i have a total of 20 inches and of course i'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side and afterwards i'll come back and show you guys what the next step is but for now that's just what we're going to do a repetition of double crochet all around all around all around all around all around hi guys so i have the pants well i would say like almost complete like i did work the end two ends of the of the legs and now i did this open shell design at the very edge because i think it just adds it just makes everything look so classy so we are going to do the same thing on the opposite side so i'm going to show you guys how i got that on just a simple um shell pattern around the edge of it so what i did was i would make sure i walked my way to the edge of the leg because then it's going to be easier for you to start working the pattern i'm just going to reattach this yarn with a knot because i already did cut off that side just like that i'm going to reattach with a knot so from here on we are going to go ahead and chain two so after chaining two you're going to go ahead and skip five stitches and into the sixth you're going to go with a double crochet chain three double crochet so one two three four five six i'm going to go into that sixth chain with a double crochet chain three and an extra double crochet right into that same stitch from here on i'm going to chain three skip five one two three four five and into the sixth with a double crochet chain three and an extra double crochet all into that very same stitch and this is what i'm going to repeat until i get into the very first until i get back to the very first one right here we're working to the very beginning i the pattern is honestly worked in multiple of six but because obviously we were working in rounds and there was no way to tell if we had multiple of six what i usually do is i just worked my last v stitch up onto the last set of six so right now you can see that i have just one two stitches so it can be different for each side so the other side i think had like three and this side had two so it's not a big deal so what i'm going to do from here on we're just going to find our very first chain three we did and slip stitch into that stitch to end off this row so right there you're going to slip stitch and of course it's going to look awkward guys but i tell you for sure when you're complete you wouldn't even see all these so now from the next row you're going to go ahead and chain one and right into this v stitch you're going to go with three double crochets chain two and an extra three double crochet all into that very same v stitch <clears throat> so right from there you're going to go into this chain three space with a single crochet and you're going to go into this v stitch again with three double crochets chain two and an extra three double crochets all into that very same chain two space and this is what you're going to repeat all around when you get to the chain three you're going to go with a single crochet 
and I repeat the same three double crochet chain three chain two sorry three double crochet again until you get to the very beginning right here we have the last set of v-stitch so I'm going to go in there with the same pattern three double crochets chain two three more double crochets and from there on I'm going to go into that chain one I did at the very beginning which is right there find the first chain one that I did at the very beginning and slip stitch right into that and this automatically just ends off the row perfectly and now we have this complete so I'm just going to cut this off and sew in all the loose ends